Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special edition of WHF Talks um, at COP26. And today I'm joined by Shiv Kimka, uh, who needs no introduction, but I just would like to leave the floor to him to introduce what he's up to with uh, ESG and TGALF. Uh, hello, Shiv. It's a great pleasure to Hi. have you. Thank you, Farai. Nice to have you here. Can you tell us a bit more about what you're up to these days? So we're very excited. Uh, COP26, we feel, has a real energy and is actually uh, starting to, I think, mobilize the planet's attention to the issues, uh, which we have been aware of for many years. But we're seeing now more and more actors getting involved to try and solve these issues at scale. Uh, we uh, are the accelerator to the world's to-do list and we see ourselves as a facilitator, as a platform that can coordinate and support uh, young people and entrepreneurs around the world to move towards solving the issues with the focus on the SDGs. And, uh, you know, together we can solve these problems. Amazing. Uh, we are at COP26, as I mentioned, uh, and um, unfortunately, climate change, poverty and inequalities are the defining issues of our age. Um, and humanity is in cold red, as UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has mentioned in his statements during UNGA. Um, what do you think this COP26 should achieve and what should be the outcomes? So I think uh, uh, COP26 has already achieved quite a lot with the various declarations about financing, about commitments to ending coal uh, by many countries. And I think many positive things have happened already. Uh, this is not a sprint. It's a little bit of a marathon, even though time is short. And I think we need to find ways where we can galvanize people to work together in affinity groups to solve problems at scale whether it's the oceans, whether it's on land with forests, whether it's with carbon uh, decarbonization of the economy, whether it's about new uses for carbon. And I think uh, COP is bringing together people from around the world to actually do that. And uh, the key is how do you keep that energy going? And we're very excited that uh, there's a very positive energy here, which I believe uh, we need to sustain over the coming years. Yes, that's so true. Uh, you're working with young leaders and uh, you mentioned uh, that you have a mis mission around youth. And there has been some uh, concerns and criticisms uh, around COP26 that youth voices and women were not uh, very much involved in the conversations as they should be. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm a great believer in the youth. I think uh, youth is critical. I think youth uh, has a uh, ownership of the future that is extremely important because the world we're building is the world they will inherit and hand over to the next generation. And so I think their voices need to be listened to, need to be included. And in every possible way, I think we need to involve youth into the architecture of global planetary decision making. Uh, youth today is not youth of yesterday, because I think with the access to the internet, access to information, access to knowledge, access to connectivity through social media, I think the youth today has a very different understanding of the world, which we need to listen to very carefully and then respond to with whatever little experience and wisdom we might have with a few more years on the planet. So I think it's really a collaborative enterprise. Uh, to do it together and uh, so I'm all in favor and of mm -hmm. course gender goes without saying you know mm -hmm. women uh, you know are I believe wiser than men mm -hmm. and so we need more women uh, more women's voices we need more young women's voices involved in actually healing the planet that's so true um you know, with COP26, uh, we have seen more than 100 world leaders coming together and doing their pledges and sharing their commitments, which is a very positive uh, movement towards uh, the climate action. Uh, but it is um, an issue, it's a problem, it's a challenge that not only governments can solve, so we need non-state actors to be part of the conversations which are 
private sector, civil society. Uh, how can we include non-state actors into this action and how can we make this work, do you think? I think it's happening now. You're seeing business leaders stepping up, corporations stepping up, uh, lots of NGOs stepping up to the plate. And I think really it's about all of us coming together and finding a way to resolve these. And everyone needs to, all hands to deck. Everyone needs to put their hands to this work, whether it's in terms of educating the world, whether it's in terms of action to solve these problems, whether it's in terms of financing to solve these problems. I think we all have to come together, whether it's in terms of the media's role, in terms of actually selling and talking about the issues and explaining these issues to everyone on the planet. And I think it's a big challenge. Uh, here we uh, hear the conversations around capitalism and it has harmed the world for the last 200 years. Uh, but now there is a rise around for good and um, there is a rise around the uh, betterness of humanity. So um, maybe we should call this as philanthropic capitalism. And as a philanthropist, what would be your thoughts around philanthropic capitalism? Well, I think capitalism you know, has got a bad rap in some way. Of course, many things have not been good, but they've also, you know, the, the energy of the last few hundred years has pulled hundreds of millions of people out of poverty, has created healthcare systems that give us much better health, has given us educational tools, uh, you know, has given us connectivity that we've never had, transportation connections that we've never had. So I think there are wonderful things that have happened to make our lives much better. The problem is inequity. The problem is 8% of the planet has 83% of the planet's wealth. Mm -hmm. That's clearly not sustainable. I think we need more equity. We need more uh, access to opportunity for everyone. I think we need a broader entrepreneurial mindset. And I think philanthropy and entrepreneurship need to go together. I think in the sense that I think entrepreneurs need to understand that they're stewards of wealth. The wealth is not just for themselves, mm -hmm. but that wealth that they have the chance to create is really for everyone and to be shared in a thoughtful way to create a, a broader, more equitable, just society, an inclusive society. And so I am a great believer. I think just philanthropy on its own has a role to play, but I think actually uh, philanthropy, uh, a philanthropic attitude from people that bring a capitalist energy is very important. You mentioned about entrepreneurship and you have a program called ESG. Can you uh, tell us a little bit more about what you're trying to achieve with ESG? Sure. So as the accelerator to the world's to-do list, mm -hmm. we said, how do we bring millions of entrepreneurs together in a framework to solve the SDGs and to work on progressing the SDGs? And so we created something called the Entrepreneurship Sports Generation. Uh, we want everyone, a whole generation of people, to reimagine entrepreneurship as a sport. So imagine uh, the World Cup or uh, soccer leagues in different countries or mm -hmm. uh, cricket leagues in different countries like IPL in India. Uh, and the excitement and the energy that they bring and the inclusiveness that they create for everyone to get involved. That's really what we're trying to do. Uh, or the Olympics, which brings everyone together from around the world, country by country, city by city, Teams unite, form, help each other, and then work together to participate in these global sporting events. And so imagine if you saw entrepreneurship as a sporting event to solve the problems of the planet, to deal with the SDGs, and to focus on whatever people are passionate about, to build affinity groups to solve these problems. And so we've created that. Uh, last year we had 300,000 entrepreneurs from 195 countries, and we curated and gave away $300 million of prizes. This year, our target is 1 million entrepreneurs and a billion dollars of prizes, and we want to double every year, because by doing that, we think we'll actually move the needle. About 400 million people on the planet are entrepreneurs. We want people to move towards technology entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. because we believe technology entrepreneurship will create a world of abundance, mm -hmm. uh, but we need to make it equitable, and we need to think how we do that. So it also needs a mindset of mm -hmm. great leadership, leadership that inculcates not only leadership skills and risk-taking, but also ethics and altruism as a core part of that ecosystem. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Um, 
WHF's theme for COP26 is five Ps. It's a lot of Ps, I know, but uh, people, planet, prosperity, peace and partnerships. What would be your remarks on this theme? I think it's great. All of those things are mm -hmm. fundamental. They're the foundations. Partnerships to me would be very critical. Uh, and I think it's about partnerships. Of course, people, planet is critical. Uh, but I think the partnership aspect is really important because if we're going to solve these problems, if we create the walls and barriers between us, uh, then that's not going to be helpful. And I think beyond politics, we need to find a unity of humanity to solve these problems. And that's what we really need to uh, reach for. Thank you so much, Shiv. And my last question to you, as you work with young leaders around the world and you explained uh, your uh, strategy with ESG, what would be your message to the young generations if they watch this uh, interview five, ten years uh, after it's recorded? What would be your message? My message would be that this is an incredible moment in history with incredible challenges, incredible problems, which we can solve if we bring three things together. First, a mindset that inculcates ethics and altruism. Number two, we harness technology to do what we need to do. And number three, we actually look at these problems in a collective way and work as teams to solve them. I think we can have a world of abundance for all of us and for our children, for future generations. So we think everyone needs to bring an entrepreneurial mindset to the table. And with that, I think we can solve these problems. Amazing. Thank you so much Shiv, for your time. And it was a true pleasure to have this conversation with you. And thanks for being part of WHF Talks. Thanks. Thanks, Farai. Really appreciate it. And I really admire the work you're doing. Thank you so much. And the much. work that WHF is doing. So congratulations and keep it up. Thank you so much.